Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about eight engaging instructional pedagogical strategies to captivate the hearts and minds of your students. So if you're interested in finding out about these eight strategies, then please keep on watching. So this week I'm going to be talking about eight engaging strategies to captivate the hearts and minds of your students and it's based on chapter five of my book Concept Based Mathematics, Teaching for Deep Conceptual Understanding in Secondary Schools. In case you are a primary or elementary teacher, I would say that 95% of the book I write is applicable to pre-K to 12, and it's only the specific examples that are actually secondary. If you would like elementary examples to supplement this book, let me know. I have a huge learning resource that I can share for elementary teachers. So in chapter five, which is on page 130, I talk about different strategies to engage your students, to captivate their hearts and minds. And the first strategy that I talk about is to create a social learning environment. Human beings are born social. We are born as part of tribal communities and we flourish when we are connected to other humans and when we build positive relationships. So in order to enhance learning, ensure that you give your students lots of opportunities to collaborate in a meaningful and positive way that builds teamwork and positive relationships. So my second strategy is about encouraging students to make mistakes, go through productive struggle, and for them to see this as a normal part of the learning process. And in fact, learning does not happen if they do not go through some kind of challenge or grapple with some ideas and make mistakes. So rather than encouraging your students to avoid making mistakes, nurture a culture that actually celebrates mistakes and productive struggle and challenge. My next strategy is about adopting an inductive learning approach and using the levels of inquiry as a continuum within a lesson or within a few lessons or within a unit. So the inductive learning model aligns beautifully with the Singapore Maths model, which is the CPA or CRA model. And that stands for concrete, pictorial or representational, and then abstract. My fourth strategy is to reduce TTT which is teacher talk time to the whole class. Now, we don't want to be standing at the front of the room, the sage on the stage, and to be the bearer of all knowledge. We want students to be working collaboratively, and we are immersed in the learning environment and providing scaffolding and prompts to different groups of students when they need them. So my fourth strategy is reduce whole class teacher talk time. My fifth strategy is about incorporating differentiation in your class and honoring the different types of students, the different backgrounds that they bring, the different cultures and the different learning profile that they bring to your class. So how can we be intentional in our planning and in our teaching and be flexible and responsive to the learners in front of us? Strategy six is about, and I'm just going to read it from my book, be purposeful when asking students to answer questions. There is safety in numbers. So this means that we want to create a safe learning environment. We know that maths anxiety is a huge problem around the world with our students, and we do not want to contribute to more maths anxiety around the world. So when we're asking our students to contribute and participate to lessons, that does not mean that we have to call them out or call their names out randomly in the class. Instead, we can ask groups of students to volunteer to feedback or we can ask our students to contribute and participate by using a digital space or by recording on a mini whiteboard. Let's try to honor both those introverts and extroverts in our class and ensure that we don't make any student uncomfortable by calling their name out randomly and asking them to answer questions in class. And my last strategy is about flexible fronts. So I mentioned before that we do not have to be the sage on the stage anymore, not even the guide on the side, but we can be the meddler in the middle. And I love visiting classrooms where I walk into the class and I can't see where the teacher is. Sometimes the teacher's on the floor talking to a group of students who are working on the floor. Sometimes the teacher's in the corner at a vertical non-permanent surface. We do not have to have a front of a classroom. I know that some people call this defront of the classroom. I call it flexible fronts because the front is basically wherever the students or the teacher 
is drawing attention to the whole class and maybe presenting some ideas and sharing some ideas. So maybe the front of the classroom becomes the corner of the classroom where a particular group is situated and they're presenting their ideas to the rest of the class. So we have therefore flexible fronts. The front changes all the time. So they're my eight strategies for trying to captivate the hearts and minds of our students. I have more specific examples in my book that are actually pre-K to 12 in chapter five. So feel free to look at specific examples from my book. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. Have a wonderful week ahead and I hope to see you next time.